Um, good year, Zabenja and okay, Zoop. I'm the CEO and co-founder of nonfungible.com. And what we'll see today is that we'll um, we'll present you some insights about um, the market and the trends regarding the digital fashion and digital wearables on the blockchain. Um, so just to begin with and give you a little bit of context. Uh, so what do we do at nonfungible.com? Uh, basically, uh, we are a data platform. We, pr we uh, track all the sales from what we call NFTs. So these are vehicles for crypto goods, crypto assets on the blockchain. And among these assets, we see some wearables, some fashion assets that are traded um, on the Ethereum blockchain. So just to begin with, uh, what is a wearable. Um, basically, it is an accessory. It's an item uh, that exists in a virtual form. Um, it may or may not be worn by a digital representation of yourself, uh, such as an avatar, for example, but it's not a mandatory. Um, among these wearables, uh, we today see some examples of clothes or uh, helmets or digital yeah, fashion accessory and bags, these kind of things. It can, of course, be some video game assets of, uh, like um, weapons, helmets, um, armors, these kind of things. Um, so there are really dozens of use cases on kind of wearables. So this is basically our uh, playground. So today we'll focus on two of the main projects that have initiated with wearables on the blockchain. These two projects are Decentraland and CryptoVoxels. You may have already heard about them uh, because they're kind of famous in the uh, NFT space. These are called virtual worlds or metaverses. So if you've already heard about uh, Ready Player One or Second Life, it's totally comparable to these projects or uh, virtual worlds. What is interesting uh, to begin with is that in these two projects, these wearables are not only meant as um, assets on the market. They have really created what we can consider as a culture. There are some trends, and it can be hype or not hype to own or to wear these kind of wearables, these clothes. These are the first examples of digital hype about fashion, about, um, yeah, um, clothing trends. So what are the use cases today? The first one, of course, is about wearing the asset. So your avatar, here is an example of an avatar in Decentraland, uh, can wear these clothes. You can just own it and wear them and show to everyone that you, you, are, you are looking good <laughs> with them. The other use case, which is probably one of the most important today as well, is to collect them. Of course, you won't be able to wear them, or maybe you're just not interested in uh, walking in the metaverse with your clothes, with your glasses or whatever. So you just want to own them because having a collection is, is a thing, definitely. And the last use case is about the market making. Um, some people are today absolutely don't care about the metaverses, they just care about the asset and their value. It's a marginal use case, uh, in my personal opinion, because um, at the end of the day, the purpose of these assets are to be worn, I'd say, but in some cases, um, they're only considered as speculative assets. So you can definitely um, make money, and some people today are living from trading these wearables. So the first wearables um, appeared in basically in October 2019, so exactly one year ago on Decentraland. So for Halloween um, 2019, sorry, on Decentraland. About a year after today, this market already weighed about half a million. 
So it's extremely interesting. I mean, this figure is not huge, but if we consider these wearables uh, as really assets meant for the people active on Decentraland or CryptoVoxels, it can look like a really, really tiny niche. But this really, really tiny niche for experts, geeks, nerds, whatever, um, is already waiting half a million, which is just crazy. So uh, for a start, is really a crazy start. So um, let, let's talk about the sales themselves, um, the value of these assets. These are some of the highest sales that occurred on the central land market, only on wearables. So this, um, this clothes, this top, uh, has been sold for a little less than 2,000 USD. We have identified another T-shirt that has been sold for more than 2,000 USD. I mean, for only one T-shirt that is just a digital wearable. There is no physical version of these ones. A third one, these sneakers, these, um, it looks like Converse, I guess, um, have been sold for almost 6,000 USD, which is pretty big. And the final one, this accessory, I'm sorry, this is knife. <laughs> this was a uh, Halloween accessory, has been sold for more than 10,000 USD. I recall that these are only digital assets, that people have spent this amount of cash to own this asset to wear or to use in a digital world only. So let's imagine the possibilities if this was link to a physical one or if there are any advanced use case that we haven't imagined yet this is pretty crazy so i've told you about the link between the physical and the digital assets um, it is something that has actually already been explored by some projects um, for example if we take this example of a mask it's <laughs> kind of hype. Um, I'm in Paris uh, today, so that's why we all wear masks and we're ready for our second lockdown. Anyway, so um, this mask um, has been created as a digital version in the central land and a physical version has been created as well. So you were able to purchase the digital and the physical one in the meantime. But what is interesting, and actually I have no real explanation for that, is that it has no impact on the asset itself. The fact that this um, digital version of the asset and the physical uh, version exist has no impact on the, um, on the mask in terms of value. Um, so if you try to guess the value of the physical and of the digital one, the physical is has been sold for 17 USD. Um, the digital one <laughs> has been sold for more than 100. So you see that the value is totally decorrelated from the physical world. Uh, of course, I mean, for a physical asset, the physical mask that you will wear, it's already kind of expensive to spend uh, almost 20 USD for that. On a digital world, it's completely different. It's really about hype. It's really about having this good looking mask. It's not only about wearing a mask in the street. So it's really interesting to notice the difference between the physical and the digital assets in terms of value. There were other examples of assets that have been uh, created as a physical and digital uh, version, uh, but this is an interesting example. Um, so let's look at the market share of wearables. Um, if we look at the central end, um, wearables are kind of, um, they're not that big. Um, you, on the central land, you can trade different things. You can trade a name, for example, it's some kind of a nickname. Um, you can, of course, trade real estate. So basically the world uh, you are going to, um, to walk in uh, are, is made of parcels that you can trade. And of course, your avatar can wear uh, clothes. So 
each of these assets can be traded. And you can notice that the price of wearables is basically tiny compared to real estate. Um, a piece of land in the central land is worth a little more than 1,000 USD today, maybe a little less, I don't know, uh, the exact tr um, price today. Names are not worth that much. But wearables, these things are representing almost 10%. It is not huge in terms of value, I mean. But if you look at the market itself, I mean, the volume of sales, wearables are massive. These things are 60% of the total market. So 8% of the USD traded are traded in wearables, but 60% of the sales are made of the wearables. And real estate are just kind of expensive, but they are, real estate is only 4% of the, of the market. So it's extremely interesting to see that there is a huge liquidity around wearables. People are trading them every day and there are really some hype. You, you can notice if you, if you observe the market really closely, you will notice that uh, some red clothes are high for a few months, blue ones are high for the next month. And it, it's really, really cool to see these trends it's really about fashion, about hype. Um, so something that we have learned from this first year of wearables in these uh, metaverses is that um, the RARA, the NFT, the higher the value. For example, on the central land, um, they have created uh, what are called mythic wearables. So basically, these are the rarest ones. Um, it means that each of these assets um, have only 10 editions of them. So this Christmas hat, this, uh, I don't know what exactly it is, the hazmat suit and this um, snowman, uh, there are only 10 of them and there will never be more than 10 of them. And today, these are not the price that have been sold. This is the price that the current owner um, require. So, in terms of USD, this one, uh, this is most expensive one, sorry, the snowman, is currently for sale for more than uh, 90,000 USD, which is a little crazy in my opinion, but I don't know. Uh, we have seen such crazy sale that it's not impossible that someone one day pay that price for this mythic snowman. We'll see. It is basically a um, a mask that you can wear, uh, that your avatar can wear. So, yeah, the conclusion about that, and it, it's not really a surprise, but the rarer of the NFT, the higher the value. Um, so, there are two main, um, not trends, but two philosophy about these wearables in these virtual worlds. And we'll compare. Um, once more, Decentraland and crypto voxels. The first approach, Decentraland approach, is to have somehow a centralized feel, um, creation of um, wearables. So basically, you need some advanced skills. It's not that easy to create uh, wearables in Decentraland. Um, you'll need to evaluate, to, I'm sorry, to validate with uh, the decentralized decentralized DAO uh, that your wearable is okay, that you can put it on the market, and uh, of course you need some advanced 3D skills to create it. So it's not like a completely decentralized decentralized ecosystem where everyone can just go there and put his wearables for sale. You need to produce some high quality wearables clothes to uh, put them on the market. So that's why probably that, uh, why uh, the, disable, the decentralized wearables are kind of expensive today. On the other end, you have crypto voxels. In crypto voxels, anyone, I mean you, me, really anyone can create his, his own wearables. So it means that you just have to 
take some breaks, just like a Lego or Minecraft, if you want, and you can create a wearable. So there is a really a large um, difference between the most expensive and the less expensive one because some are really basic or really looking poor for some of them, and some are really, really complex, made by artists. So it's really an approach of user-generated content in CryptoVoxels. And in Decentraland, even if there are some initiatives to uh, authorize a community to create um, clothes and wearables, it's way more centralized. So these two approaches are interesting. They are different, but I'm, I'm potentially complementary. So, and I'll conclude on that. Um, what is the future of digital clothing? Um, they are definitely in their infancy. Um, it has been a really crazy start. I mean, uh, half a million in just a year is just crazy for this little niche. I mean, the NFT can be seen as a niche for some people. So the wearables on the blockchain can be looked as a niche in the niche. Um, but in less than a year, it has just been crazy. So what, whichever the approach you choose, um, a decentralized or um, only with artists or something maybe a little more elitist, it's up to you to choose the best approach. Um, it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be really a test and learn approach for months and probably years. Um, so yeah. Uh, it's up to you to build the rest. We are all excited to see uh, where the digital fashion and digital wearables are going. Actually, we don't know, but it's really an exciting time that we we are living. So thank you. I don't know if we have some time for Q&A, Sam. But... Sure, I think.